Pastor Jim Doherty, Power to Change Crusades. I felt led by the Spirit of God to jump online tonight and uh, talk to you about the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I, I got to tell you, it's so important. It's um, something that the Spirit of God put on me uh, as I was praying with my family tonight. And I actually went back to the Old Testament and I looked at the New. And I wanted to share some things with you. I also wanted to lift up some prayer requests tonight uh, as the some uh, that I've written or they've written me. Um, I wanted to lift up uh, those that have. And if you have a prayer request, I'd love to pray for you. Please uh, write me and uh, I'll be glad to pray for you and your family. But I wanted to look at the Genesis chapter 3 account where Adam and Eve sinned against God. They ate, the, ate of the fruit, the forbidden fruit that God said not uh, to eat. And of course, the repercussions and the consequences came out and God uh, gave those out to mankind, to Adam, to Eve. Uh, as you know, Adam would work and sweat uh, all the days of his life and return to the ground that he was made from. But then for Eve, childbearing is one of those things that uh, uh, pain would be in the childbirth. And, uh, but there was a blame game going on there, if you remember, uh, when God said, who told you, uh, you know, not to eat, or who, you know, who, why did you do it, basically? Why did you eat of the fruit? And uh, Eve said, it was a man. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, Adam said, it was my wife. <laughs> and then, um, you know, Eve, Eve actually said, more importantly, she said, the devil made me do it. <laughs> you know, the fact is, is that God had a plan, even in the Garden of Eden. And um, there was a temporary covering that took effect that God did um, one of the first sacrifices, but it was a temporary covering. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, it says, also for Adam and and his wife, the Lord God, made tunics of skin and clothed them. So there had to be an animal that uh, was killed and a sacrifice was made so that Adam and Eve would have tunics or clothing that would be a temporary covering, if you will, um, because they were naked and God clothed them back in the garden. But that didn't take away their sins. That just was a temporary covering. Um, all the Old Testament, uh, you know, sacrifices were just temporary coverings. It did not take away people's sins. Um, but we go to the New Testament and we see Jesus, the Lamb of God, who not only came to sacrifice his life as a Lamb of God willingly, but John 1.29, John the Baptist, the next day John was... Uh, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So in the Old Testament, there were coverings, sacrifices, you know, of animals that were temporary coverings. Even God covered uh, Adam and Eve with the tunics and things like that back in the Garden of Eden. But in the New, Jesus, the Lamb of God, His blood, can cleanse us of our sins, but take away our sins. What a blessing. Where would, we, where would you and I be without the blood of Jesus? I can tell you right now, lost and on our way to hell. But by the grace of God, we can be saved and forgiven. Um, Ephesians 1 verse 7, it says, In Him, in Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, According to the riches of his grace, praise God, we can, we can have forgiveness and our sins could be not only forgiven, but removed. God can forgive your sins and it's not a covering anymore. He can actually wipe them away and remove them from you. Hebrews 9.22 tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins or removal of sins, but Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, went to the cross. He shed His blood, and we can be forgiven of all of our sins. And I praise God for this because, because of the blood of Jesus and because of Jesus, the Lamb of God, our sins can be removed. 
That's awesome. One more verse as I share with you tonight. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Thank you, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of mankind, who would, takes away the sins of the world. God can forgive any one of their sins through his Son, Jesus Christ. And he can forgive you of any sin that you've ever committed. And if you're watching right now and you're not right with God, your sins are right before God and you see that you are, are not right with him. I would invite you to get right with God tonight. Give your life to Jesus Christ because Jesus, the Lamb of God, can forgive you and remove your sin from you. He can make you white as snow and you can be forgiven by his blood. The forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. If you're watching, the Bible says we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says in James 2.10, if you've offended in one point of the law of God, you've offended all of it. But I have good news for you. 2,000 years ago, God sent his son to save. The bad news is we deserve the wrath of God. We deserve to be punished and thrown into hell. But God in his mercy and grace sent Jesus to die on the cross, the Lamb of God, who shed his blood. And you can be forgiven of all your sins. No matter what you've done, God can forgive you. But you must repent and turn from your sins. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says, Turn from your sins and turn to Christ. The times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of Jesus. He willingly laid down his life, and we can be forgiven. And the Lamb of God, Jesus, can not only forgive you, but he can remove your sins. The blood sacrifices of the Old Testament were a temporary covering, but Jesus, the Lamb of God, can take away your sins. Would you like to get right with God? Would you like your sins to be forgiven by, by the Lord Jesus? Right now, pray to receive Christ, to repent of your sins, and put your faith in Jesus Christ alone. Ask God to forgive you. And by the blood that he shed on the cross, he can forgive you of all of your sins. Would you pray with me? Oh God, Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you shed your blood for me at the cross. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. There's no removal of sins. But I thank you, Jesus, that you willingly laid down your life and obediently went to the cross and died for me, died for the sins of the world. God, please forgive me of my sins. I ask you to make me right with God and remove my sins from me and wash them away by the blood of Jesus. And when you look at me, don't look at my sin any longer. Look at your son, the son of God. I believe that you are God in human flesh, that you lived a perfect life, Lord Jesus. And that not only you were crucified for me, that you were buried and defeated death, and you're alive. You arose again on the third day. I put my faith in Jesus Christ alone. And I ask God to forgive me of my sins through his son, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Fill me now with the Holy Spirit and save me from hell. Give me assurance of heaven. I ask this in Jesus' name. Write my name in the book of life. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with me, would you please call me right now, 1-800-973-5543. I'd love to lift you up in prayer and encourage you in the decision that you've made tonight. 1-800-973-5543. If you're watching by social media, would you please write me a message? I'd love to hear from you. You can write me on the wall. You can write me on Instant Messenger, Facebook, 
Instagram, or on YouTube. I look forward to hearing from you. As the Spirit of God would lead you, please write me as it would be an encouragement to my heart, and I would be blessed to know that you've got right with God tonight through His Son, Jesus Christ. I'd like to pray for some prayer requests tonight that um, are ongoing, and uh, I'd, I'd like to pray for uh, a precious baby girl, Madeline. Uh, she's a preemie. Um, I've been reading about this little girl. She had a, a brain traumatic injury at birth, and um, there is um, an injury that's causing her uh, to go on hospice. And her, her mom has mentioned that uh, the doctors are sending her baby home uh, on hospice. Can we just pray for Madeline tonight? Just, just this precious, I think she's 22 days old. Just pray for this precious baby girl. And uh, also Carson, an eight-year-old boy who's in the hospital uh, who had a, an infection in his heart that has now gone to his lungs. And I, I saw some things about possible pneumonia. Can we just lift up these two uh, precious children? And um, would you join your hearts in prayer with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for Madeline this precious baby. There's nothing impossible that you, that you can do all things. If it is your will, I pray that you would touch this baby and heal this baby, that she would be able to eat and function and she would get blood in her brain and, and reconnect those areas that have been disconnected by this traumatic brain injury and the bleeding that has gone on, God, in her brain. I just pray that you would touch her brain and I just pray for a miracle. I pray that you would do a miraculous miracle in this baby's life. I also want to pray for Carson, the eight-year-old who's in the hospital tonight. His temperature has been up to 104. And the doctors are treating him as um, his infection from his heart has gone into his lungs. And, oh God, would you please be with this eight-year-old Carson? I pray for strength upon the family, protection upon these two precious children, and I pray for all families out there that are dealing with coronavirus or cancer or diabetes or other diseases, Lord, that you would be with them, heart disease, all those things, Lord, that people are dealing with, that you would have your way, have your purpose, and have your plan, but I pray for healing upon those even in the hospital right now. Um, I just lift up uh, Abelina as I prayed for her and her family last night. I lift up her mom who, who is in the hospital um, I just pray for healing upon her mom and just strength upon Abilene as well, Lord, and lift up her family to you. I lift up those in our lives right now that we know that do not yet know Jesus, that we would continue to share Jesus and the gospel with them and share about the blood of Jesus that can not only cleanse us of our sins, but forgive us. Thank you, Lord. Pray for those that have made commitments to Christ tonight, that they would call in or write in. And let me know how I can encourage them in their relationship with Jesus Christ as they've put their faith in the Lord. I just pray that they would grow in the Word of God, grow in the Christian faith, grow in prayer, and grow in fellowship with God and His people. I glorify your name tonight, Lord. I lift up these prayer requests to your hands. I lift up David to you, uh, who wrote me again that there's difficulty in his home. Lord, they're threatening to kick him out. You know who he is. You know what he's dealing with. His rent has been raised so many times by his family, and they're threatening to put him out on the streets. Oh, God, would you please provide for this young man and, and his brother and his family? I just lift him up to you, God. And I give you the praise and the honor and the glory. I lift up my family. I lift up all families and people that are watching this, that you would work in their family and their life to bring about your purpose and your plan and your desire and your will to be done. Thank you for this night, Lord. I glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you have a prayer request, please write me. I love to pray for you and I love to lift you up and, and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. And if God has spoken to you tonight, you've given your life to Jesus Christ, please call me again. 1-800-973-5543. If you have a prayer request, please write me as well or call. I love to hear from you. If you'd like to support Power to Change Crusades, we're a nonprofit ministry, 501c3. And you can go to my website. You see it on the comment section there, powertochange.org. And you can give 
and become a monthly partner as I'm on television on Sunday nights reaching 38 million households and I'm also reaching many here on social media on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to also uh, support us through mail, you can do so. Look at the comments there. Power to Change Crusades, Post Office Box 33901, Granada Hills, California, zip code 91344. This is my full-time ministry, and I'm so blessed that uh, God is opening doors for me to go preach at different places and to train and to do seminars and things like that. If God would speak to you, if you're a pastor out there watching, and you would like for me to come and speak, please write me or call me, 1-800-973-5543. As the Spirit of God would lead you, Pastor, it would be an honor to connect with you and talk to you about a future date in the future, uh, just to share God's Word and preach the Gospel and see people saved. That's what it's all about, and make disciples. Thank you for watching. Share this devotional with someone. Share Jesus as He's the way, the truth, and the life. Our vision is Jesus at Power to Change Crusades with Pastor Jim Doherty. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed evening. Have a blessed day wherever you're watching. And please be safe and healthy in Jesus' name.